Alrighty, Hosses, welcome back. And in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each one of these directories and files, and I'm going to give you guys a real brief overview of what they are and exactly what it does. And then by the end of this video, we're going to have a really solid understanding of what all the different pieces of Angular 2 application are, why they are important, and just help us understand the basic overview of a simple application. However, before we get to that, I want to mention one thing that may cause some confusion later on, and that's this. Of course, we're going to be working with Angular 2 making cool web applications. So of course, we're going to be writing some HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. However, we're not going to be writing plain old boring JavaScript like you may be used to. We are actually going to be writing a version of it called TypeScript. So if you guys are like, wait a minute, you're telling me that all of my knowledge of JavaScript is just going to go out the window and I have to learn this whole new language just to work with Angular 2? No, it's only a little bit different than JavaScript. However, it does come with some really cool features that make it incredibly easy to write Angular applications. So as long as you guys are familiar with JavaScript or any programming language, really, you guys are going to be able to follow along really easy. And as you follow along with these videos, if there's ever anything different between TypeScript and normal JavaScript, I'm going to point it out. Again, it's going to be a piece of cake, so don't worry. So I say this because your browser and actually every browser in the world, it doesn't understand TypeScript natively. So your browser can only understand JavaScript. So every time we write TypeScript, what needs to happen is before we make our application live, before we actually run it in a browser, this TypeScript code needs to get converted to JavaScript. So again, we're going to be writing TypeScript. We have to convert it to JavaScript. And then this final JavaScript gets ran in the browser. Now, usually people use programs like this one online. They're actually called transpilers. They're pretty much just translators. But the way I set up our project, and we're going to see in just a bit, is I took care of this for you behind the scenes. So we just need to worry about writing TypeScript and we can just write it normally. And behind the scenes, we're going to see that it actually gets converted to JavaScript and we really don't have to worry about it. But I just mentioned this because we're going to have two folders and these files are going to be generated automatically. And if you guys are like, what the heck, where did that come from? That's kind of what's happening. So again, one last time, we're going to be writing TypeScript behind the scenes. The way I set it up is it automatically converts it all to JavaScript and the JavaScript files are what your browser is actually going to use. So now that I said that, we can hop back to our project and start going through all of these directories. So this first one right here, I'll just start from the top and work my way down. Maybe I'll hop around a bit, who knows. But this app directory, this is our main application. That's what it stands for, directory. So 95% of the time, we're going to be working right in here in this file called TS. So again, this file is our TypeScript file. This is the code that we're going to be writing. And behind the scenes, there's actually a tool running that converts it to JavaScript. So again, never actually edit any of the files in here. Never mess with anything inside this directory. These files get generated automatically. So we can actually see we have a file called main.ts, which is main.typescript. We can actually look at it right now. And it gets converted to this file, main.javascript. And there's another file called app.component.typescript. That's what we're going to be writing. It gets converted to app.component.javascript. All right, simple enough. But wait a minute. What are these other files in here? I mean, we pretty much have a TypeScript file. It gets converted to JavaScript. So what the heck are these map files? Well, these map files are just extra files that basically help you debug your code. So check this out. We're going to be writing TypeScript. It gets converted to JavaScript that the browser is going to run. So if there's ever an error in here, it's going to say, um, there's actually an error with line number 13. So we're going to look at our code. We're going to be like, um, yeah, actually we wrote TypeScript in there isn't a line number 13, so uh, can you help me out? That's what those map files do. So they basically help you debug. So instead of telling you the error with a plain JavaScript file, which is worthless to us, we can map it back and it can say, oh, actually there's error with line number four 
or whatever. All right, moving on. Let me close these and minimize this. All right. So we already know what this directory is right here. Again, never actually go in here and edit any of this code. This is just all of the modules that were downloaded by the NPM tool. So again, don't even touch anything in here ever. And this next one right here, these typings, typings are basically, whenever we use new libraries, normal JavaScript doesn't understand some of the syntax that we use by default. So we use these typings file to pretty much say, hey, these definitions define the new rules and that way our compiler or transpiler can convert other new JavaScript stuff to plain old JavaScript. Again, inside here, never even touch it. But, uh, you know, I just wanted to explain what it was real quick. Um, this git ignore file. If you are unfamiliar with git, then this is basically saying, all right, what files do you want to ignore whenever you, you know, are working with your repo? So most of this code, whenever I put it online for you guys, of course, I want you guys to have, but some files like this, like this is the settings file for my IDE. And it says, hey, ignore the settings. The people really don't care what font size or colors I use. So again, the non-important files you can declare right there. Um, Index.html. This is, of course, the main index or homepage for your website. Package.json, I'm sure you guys already know what this is. Basically, um, it's basic info about your project and also information about what libraries and dependencies that your project needs. And again, whenever you run npm install, it actually looks through here and installs all of this and sticks it in your node modules. Pretty cool. This readme.md, this actually has nothing to do with Angular. This is just for whenever you go to the repo on GitHub that I told you guys to go to in the first tutorial and you see the instructions at the bottom, that's what this is. So you can, like I said, delete it if you want. All right, so this tsconfig.json, let me close out of this one. So these are pretty much details about how we wanna convert TypeScript to JavaScript. So a lot of these you just keep the default of, but here I'll talk to you guys through one of these so you can kind of see what's going on. So this out directory says, all right, whenever we are finished converting all this TypeScript to JavaScript, where do you want me to put those final files? And we just said, well, how about in the folder called app slash JS? So it looks to app, makes a folder called JS, and puts all your final files right there. If you didn't have this, then what it would do is it would actually just put all of your JavaScript files in the same directory, and then we would have all of our TypeScript files and JavaScript files mixed together. So again, just a bunch of basic information about how you want to translate TypeScript to JavaScript. And this last file right here, typings.json, this is of course what I was talking about earlier. Whenever we use new libraries, then we need the rules on how plain old JavaScript is supposed to understand that new syntax. So again, we can define these rules so the compiler can translate that properly. And this works hand in hand with this directory right here. So there you go, that's the basic overview of it. But again, like I said, most of this stuff is just behind the scenes crap. 95% of the time, we're gonna be working in here. App slash TypeScript and making a whole bunch of TypeScript files to make everything work and look beautiful. So that's what we had to look forward to. Now that we got all the boring crap out of the way, we can start getting into the fun stuff, actually creating things. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys next time.